Well, good morning, everyone, and thank you for the opportunity to let me come and tell you about the projects uh, we have been working on. Um, and thank you, Susie, for the generous introduction. I'm Shuman Banerjee, and um, I'm from the University of Wisconsin, and I'm going to tell you about uh, building a highly connected ambulance and what the implications of that are and what we have been doing for the last uh, one year. So first, I would like to acknowledge the National Science Foundation, especially the U.S. Ignite Initiative, Genie, which has uh, been funding a lot of my work and research. And uh, since our project started, um, the Wisconsin's uh, Department of Transportation also got very excited, and they have been helping us in uh, multiple uh, different ways. So uh, it's really triggered a lot of excitement around in Madison and in Wisconsin. So we, we are probably aware that uh, every year, uh, unfortunately, lives are lost because of delayed diagnosis, you know, example being heart attacks, which are among the hardest thing to combat unless you can uh, react to things very, very quickly. And so uh, the ability to react fast is actually a very important uh, uh, criteria for urgent care uh, services. So one of the things that, uh, speaking with doctors and emergency care personnel um, that have been talking about is speed of communication. So how do we get data from the ambulance as soon as a patient sort of shows up at the ambulance, as soon as the paramedics bring the patient into the ambulance, can we get that data immediately to the emergency room where, uh, for the, uh, where the doctors are waiting and uh, they can react to the patient coming in maybe in 10 minutes, 20 minutes, depending on how long it takes the ambulance. So they can prep themselves for the upcoming procedures. Another important thing that uh, we have been told is uh, it's very important to have multimodal information. You just, uh, just knowing that there's one patient at an incident site may not be enough because there may be other people who may need attention. And sometimes by being able to see visually what's going on at this incident, uh, people can react. They can say, okay, we should send uh, maybe an air helicopter to uh, go and airlift people. So the ability to put cameras that will send you live feeds is also very, very useful. So what is Wireover? Wireover is essentially technology to create a highly connected ambulance. So we have equipped uh, ambulances with our technology, and that provides high bandwidth inter connections between the ambulance, hospital, and uh, 911 dispatch centers, and so on. The technology itself um, is kind of unique, in my opinion. Um, what we try to do is we put a small gateway in the ambulance. The gateway connects to all available wireless networks. Now, if you think of today, uh, many of you may be connected to the Wi-Fi network, but around us we have uh, AT&T, Verizon, Sprint, all these different carriers providing connectivity. Each of them work well at individual locations. Sometimes they have outages at specific locations. By being able to connect to all of them simultaneously, we can create or establish a very high bandwidth path between the ambulance and any other location. Okay, so that's sort of the main technology uh, component that we had designed. And then we back it through numerous cloud-based services. And that's actually very important, which I'm going to talk about next. So we use uh, software-defined networking that you've heard uh, multiple times today uh, as, as a mechanism to manage this multiple network. So when, when we have traffic, internet traffic, or uh, data, uh, patient data going from the ambulance to the hospital, we use software-defined networking techniques to decide which path this data should take. It depends on the characteristics of each network. It depends on available bandwidth uh, and a lot of other properties. So we use those kinds of techniques. We use local data cloud. So for example, in this picture, you can see that an ambulance is connected to a, uh, to a local data cloud. And um, uh, as an example, uh, the paramedic may sometimes may need to do some procedure on the patient in the ambulance. And uh, there are tools and techniques that have been developed through which the paramedic can actually practice the procedure on a tablet that's physically in the ambulance, but doesn't have the computation power to run a sophisticated simulation. So they can actually do this inside the ambulance, right? That connectivity is very important. Uh, and we have cloud-based control and management of all these uh, systems. We do a lot of interesting things. Uh, we can generate, because of the data we collect, we can generate maps of every cellular carrier. So these pictures are maps of Madison, uh, downtown Madison, and essentially it shows what is the bandwidth of a particular cellular carrier across Madison, and we can use it to decide how to send traffic across different paths. The other map, which is on the bottom right corner, is a Wi-Fi map of hotspots that are available, their coverages, and so on. Okay? So we use all this to decide how to send traffic across multiple paths. 
I'm going to spend time talking and showing you demos of ambulance-based applications, but as uh, Susie pointed out, we have been doing this for a few years now. We started out with uh, working with public buses uh, in the Madison area. Uh, we also have some buses that run between Madison and Chicago. Uh, so if a uh, few of you have come from that area, you might have had a chance to use our system. And in, this, in the buses, we provide internet connectivity. And uh, also a local cab company in Madison has started using us uh, for a custom advertisement service as well as internet connectivity inside the cabs. And most recently, the uh, last month, we got started doing a deployment with uh, Wisconsin State Trooper vehicles. And they, of course, need connectivity. And they go out into various parts of the state where connectivity is a real challenge, and we have been doing deployments, and that pilot just got started. But today, I want to talk to you about ambulances, and uh, we have been doing this in the West Alice Fire Department, not very far from here, uh, close to Milwaukee. Uh, we deployed our solution there uh, since uh, late August uh, last year. And uh, let me first show you some quick uh, video uh, showing the system and uh, showing all the different components of it. He and his team at UW-Madison are testing a new wireless system. Speaking remotely, his students are connecting using Y-Rover, a technology with a stronger, more constant remote connection that brings together cellular carriers like Sprint and Verizon at the same time. Y-Rover is a significant advance over today's single carrier connections. In a side-by-side -side streaming test, Y-Rover transmits a higher data rate and in turn displays a clear and uninterrupted picture. And today with their advance, the team is working with emergency responders to improve their mobile connections to hospitals. The sooner we get the data to the hospital, the sooner they can begin preparing for the patient. Uh, let's take one of the worst case scenarios, a, a, a heart attack, a STEMI. Uh, the sooner they get that information confirmed that this is in fact a real heart attack, they can start to prepare the cath lab. Um, if we, when we send them our report, they know who the patient is that's coming in. If they've been to that facility before, just like with us, they can pull their medical records. EMS departments are using services from cellular carriers to communicate critical caregiving data with hospitals. But using a single carrier, they encounter more frequent signal losses and connection slowdowns. Y-Rover improves on that by using more than one carrier allowing field data to transmit to care center screens more reliably. For the whole system to work right and most efficient, we have to try to get as close to 100% reliability that we can possibly get to. Um, we found with just one air card in the device, we can't reach the reliability that we really would like to see so that we can always have the ability to import the CAD data, the ability to post the report or send it to the hospital so that the hospital has access to it. So we found with the Y-Rover project that running multiple air cards over multiple systems, uh, the reliability appears to be much, much more reliable and we're more successful at getting the report for the patient to the hospital before we arrive at their doors. By channeling multiple cellular connections, the team is turning the Y-Rover gateway into a platform for a new realm of applications. With mobile access at stronger and faster rates, the team is designing medical procedure simulations where first responders will be able to perform live reviews with doctors while they are en route to emergency situations. With the door open to this possibility, the team hopes to perfect these life-saving programs as their technology is introduced. Okay, now um, if we go to the other laptop, uh, what you will be able to see, so that was uh, the Z plus T experiment that was running remotely over the wide over system, which can be run in the ambulance. And so what I want to show you that this is the live demo of the system where you can see uh, this is actually a dash-mounted camera that's looking out, and you can just see the road. This is in Madison downtown, very close to our campus. And this is the kind of imagery that will be relayed live back to, uh, to the hospitals and to the emergency rooms when an ambulance arrives as a, at, at the location. So I think now uh, the people in uh, Madison has a message for us. Um, Thank you very much. <laughs>